Whoa, 63 miles an hour. So let's see what 3,500 watts does. Come on, 41, 42, 43. Come on, come on, 44. And this battery connects directly into this controller. It's only $1,000 to go to 72 volt. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a very big day. We got our 72 volt battery for the Zeus, the UU1100. And I'm gonna go over the whole entire bike on how we did this whole build and what you need to buy with links down in the description. We're also gonna do a top speed run in this video. I have hit 40 miles an hour so far, GPS confirmed but I wanna get more than that and I up the settings. So let's get into it, check it out. And stay to the end of the video if you guys wanna see what's inside this box that Ingwe sent us. All right, so right now I have the laptop connected to the bike. I wanna show you guys the settings and show you how the bike looks with the 72 volt battery. That's exactly how it looks without the seat on. The seat does block some of the battery so it doesn't look that bad once the seat's on there. But all I did is use three straps up at top and then we had to use some straps in the back. I actually had to put the battery upside down because the connector that comes out of the battery is right on the top up here and the controller was here. So with the connection being down here, if I flip the battery upside down, it wouldn't make it to the very top. So I had to flip it upside down. I'm gonna see if I can take this logo off or cover it with something because I don't like how it looks. And that's how it looks with the seat on. It actually looks a lot cleaner than I thought it was. Um, I was thinking it was gonna fill up most of the frame but it's actually sitting up there kind of like the stock battery does, so it's not too bad. You have a connection on this side. This is how you turn the bike on. So I have to hit this button right here. And then once I do that, the cycle analyst will pop up and then we'll be able to see it on our laptop. All right, so these are the laptop settings we currently have right now. Uh, 23 poles in the motor. Not exactly sure if that's accurate or not. Um, KV, all that other stuff, RS, LS, all the stuff like on the top right here. That was all set when we did the auto tune. So when you do get your phase runner and you connect it to the bike, even if you don't have a 72 volt, you do have to do this auto tune setting. It is gonna spin the motor, so make sure the kickstand is up and you have the bike on like some type of jack stands down there. Just be aware of that because you will break some stuff. Um, the main settings are we're at 2,500 watts, max phase current 90 amps. But then down here, we got the battery current max at 50 amps. I don't know what that's gonna do. I don't know if we need to change the amps to go higher to get more top speed or we need to change the max motor power to get more top speed. I'm not exactly sure. Um, these are all the settings on this side. I left them all the same. Field weakening max could only go up to 2250, so you're limited on that. Um, if we were able to change at the 30, that would have been better. And these are all my sensorless mode startups because we do not have any hall sensors detected when you hook up the phase runner because you will have to change out the motor wires in the back, but I'm not ripping the motor apart, so we're not doing that. So these are the settings that worked for me. So if you guys wanna screenshot that or whatever, and I'll also show you that you do need to adjust them depending on your weight also, you might have to put a little bit more uh, power into it. But um, let's get on the way and let's check out this bike and let's see what our top speed is going to be. Real quick before we do that though, I do wanna show you how fast this uh, wheel spins. Watch, full throttle. Dude, this thing is moving. This thing is moving so much, I might have to take the wheel lights off the back because now it's giving it a little of a vibration. But uh, let me spin this wheel really quick since it has no load on it and get it moving. That's one thing you gotta do if you do have it free spinning, you gotta give it a little bit of a push to get moving. You can see up here, look at the mile per hour when it pops up. Let me uh, focus in on this, check this out. Whoa, 63 miles an hour. That's insane. I'm expecting to hit like 45 or so of my weight on it and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, so I reset everything on my speedo meter so we have the GPS correct. And let's get out there and test this bad boy out. One thing I do want to mention is that this is accurate. I actually been adjusting this to match my GPS speed. It's a uh, one mile per hour off from my real GPS. So just keep that in mind. This is going to update faster than this GPS, if you can see either one. But I put my phone up there because I really want to save the number on our top speed and just see what it is so I can prove it to you guys. Because everyone uses the speedo meter on iOS. And uh, right now we're just kind of cruising. I'm like half throttle. It's nice and smooth. We're doing about 2000 watts. We were doing about 2500, but uh, we're moving at a solid speed, which is uh, 36 miles per hour. 
this bike feels like so much different. So 37 on there, 38 on the phone, and then this says 39 on uh, the cycle analyst. So that's pretty damn accurate. Let's uh, full throttle it. Let's see what we can get up to. Let's keep going. Go bike, go, 40. Go, 41. Come on, come on, keep going. Come on, 42. All right, I saw 42. Not bad. All right, so starting off, check that out. You see how nice it was to start this bike? There was no jerkiness, there was no like weird hesitation or nothing. This thing was absolutely perfect to leave from that four-way stop. I am absolutely impressed with the tuning that I've got on this bike after messing with it for like two weeks non-stop. I spent like five hours one night, three in the morning, just adjusting these things because I wanna help you guys and I also wanna have a fun, cool bike that goes hella fast that's not supposed to go this fast. So please smash a like on this video guys because uh, I'm really doing it for everybody out there and I really want this uh, video to get out to a lot more people so everyone can uh, start modifying their bikes. I make no commission at all on all these parts that I bought on this bike. The Amazon link to the battery will have an affiliate code so I will get a little tiny bit of commission but the phase runner, I don't work with that company. I'm just out here, you know, just making random videos and stuff. Um, you guys can use my discount code to get one of these Zeus bikes, but I'm gonna highly say it's not worth spending $3,000 on this bike. And then this setup cost me about $1,000. I think it was about 520 or 530. Yeah, there's a lot of people in this neighborhood. And then it was, uh, I believe 500 for the battery. So yeah, you're looking at like roughly like a thousand dollars on top of buying a Zeus. So if you already have one, that's probably why a lot of you guys are gonna do this mod because you're bored with the bike and you want more top speed. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna probably say that um, 40 miles an hour is not that fast. And I mean, you're right at the most part because this is a 72 volt bike now and it should hit like over 50 miles an hour. I get exactly what you guys are saying. But at the same time, how much do I want to push this bike until I probably fry the motor or mess something up or try to do 50 miles an hour and hit a big old pothole and then wreck and then I'm out like in the hospital or something like that. You definitely have to be uh, careful on this bike. I would love to try to hit 50. I still want to mess with the settings, but do I highly recommend it? Not really. <laughs> it's already sketchy going 40 and I'm someone that wants to haul ass and you know, go 60 miles an hour everywhere. Um, it feels perfectly fine until you hit one big pothole, then you're like, holy crap, the whole bike kind of pops up off the ground. I have the tires aired down a little bit too. And it does something, but it ain't doing a lot. We're already down to 82 volts on uh, the battery. It started at 85 volts. I don't know why this reads like one volt higher than what it should. It's always been like that. I don't know. I've, I've adjusted a lot of the stuff in the settings and it's never changed. And once this light um, turns green, then you guys can see the takeoff of this bike on how smooth it is. All right, so check this out, guys. Look how smooth. This is full throttle, by the way. So if you guys want to check out the mile per hour and see how fast it climbs up there, it's definitely like four times as torquey. And uh, we're holding a good speed. I like this bike now, man, but keep in mind, as your voltage does go down, we are gonna start losing mile per hour pretty quick because this isn't a very big battery. This battery is a 19.2 amp hour, if I'm not mistaken. You can get a custom battery probably made, but I didn't do that. And you can definitely probably get like a lot more range. I think it's like a 1300 watt hour battery. It's definitely bigger than stock, but now we're pushing more power. So I feel like we're still gonna get about the same range as stock. All right, so let's get back to the house really quick because now I wanna try going to a higher wattage and see if that helps our, uh, our top speed. All right, so we're back and I did check with my phone. We did hit 41.5 miles per hour on that little three mile trip that we did. I am charging the bike just ever so slightly to get a little bit of juice out of it while we tune the bike. Now I think what all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here, basic settings, let me focus in on the camera. And uh, I think I'm gonna put this at, I'm gonna do 3,500 watts. Let's see what 3,500 watts does. The max battery current, I don't understand why it's at 70, unless it just changed and I wasn't paying attention, but uh, we can't do that. Let's do um, 
Let's do 55. I think that's all we're going to do. Now let's get back out there and see what this bike will do. Holy moly, man. 3,800 watts. <laughs> man, that thing picked up fast. Now I feel like we're getting into the territory where it's kind of like... I don't know if you should be going this high on this motor. If Unless you're not afraid to burn it out, I really feel like stay at a lower level. Stay at about like 40 amps, maybe 45 amps, and I would say like 2,500 watts, maybe even 2,000 watts would be on the safer side. Let's kind of get up to speed real quick and then we'll hit it just so we don't overheat anything and I really just want to see if we can reach a uh, higher top speed. So we're gradually getting up there. I'm going kind of decently slow getting up there but we're still moving so 38 39 40 all right now full throttle full throttle baby let's go come on i know we lost the battery volt but come on 41 42 43 come on come on 44 oh my god come on keep going keep going oh 44 miles per hour on the Zeus 72 volt with 55 amps of battery current and uh, 3,500 watts. Not bad though, honestly, I know there's gonna be comments saying, oh, you didn't hit 50, that's not fast enough for a 72 volt. And honestly, yeah, there's probably things I could change. I mean, we could keep going higher and higher, but uh for, for right now i'm not trying to mess up the motor and we still need to take it on a very long distance trip we need to take it to work and see how it does when we're on the throttle for like three minutes at a time and really see if these settings are going to last i'm actually probably going to go down to a lower setting when i take it to work for the first time so stay tuned for that video if you guys want to see it um let's go back to the house looks like we hit about 44 miles an hour and um, we'll show you the setup a little bit more and exactly how I have it done. So if you guys want to do the same exact thing, you guys can. But real quick, hold on. Let's do a uh, like a 0 to 35 test or something. Let's see if I can do it before I hit this uh, four-way stop. So one, two, three, go. So it has a gradual start because that's how I kind of set it up. But then it just starts taking off, man. Woohoo! 35. There we go. That's as, as easy as that. Now to be easy on the motor, I would probably do a slow startup as well just to kind of save the motor and not mess it up too much. But anyway, let's get back to the house while we catch up to this uh, traffic. Look how I can, I can pass them. I can pass them on going so fast. You would never think a BMX bike would be able to stay with traffic. I can now ride in the street. Now the top speed run in the neighborhood. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. All right, so we're back and I did check with the GPS. It says we hit 43.6 miles per hour. So it's not that bad on this setup. And honestly, it's just, I know you guys are wanting more range, more torque. I mean, this is everything and it's all working on the stock motor. That's the reason why I did this build because a lot of people do not want to move to the bigger motors and have to change all this stuff out. And then it starts getting a lot more expensive. So I feel like this is a very nice and clean setup. This battery looks very awesome on here. You do have an indicator right there, which is obviously upside down because I had to flip it to get the wires connected, but it does tell you the battery percent on here. So if you do not have a display, because what you have to do to do this setup, if you've been living under a rock and you guys haven't seen my videos, is that you need to get a phase runner and you have to replace the stock controller. This is a phase runner. It's very small. If you guys can see it in there, it has a little red light because it's still on. That's all you need. It connects this way. Let me go on this side. So this wire comes out of the controller, goes down, and it plugs directly into your stock motor in the back. Now, the reason the hall sensors don't work, we talked about it. The way they wired this connection up is not like the stock Buffang connection because it's an L1019 connection. I think that's what it's called and it's not wired up correctly. So you would have to go into the motor, take all these bolts off and switch out some wires. We're not gonna do all that. And I know a lot of you guys aren't gonna do that. So this is a very clean setup. Um, you guys can use all my settings that I showed you and you can get this battery on Amazon. I have a link for that. And this battery connects directly into this controller. No wires needed, nothing. All you have to do is Velcro it, which it comes with Velcro as well. And the battery is connected on there pretty good. It's not gonna go anywhere. 
and I feel like it looks like a pretty clean setup. If any of you guys do have any suggestions for me, myself, or any of the Zeus community out there, or anyone that actually has a phase runner running on a stock motor on any type of e-bike, maybe you guys can drop a comment down below and help us all out. Um, the settings I've got, um, they've been working very good for me. Like I said, I took hours on them, but you guys might know more than me. So just drop a comment, like I said, and we could just help everybody out and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Now, if you guys wanna see what bike is in this box, I'm gonna build this right now and put it together and then show you, then we'll end the video. All right, so far this is how it's looking. Not a bad looking bike. Um, they did send us another box that's sitting over there and it has a separate battery in it. So it's gonna be a dual battery Ingway e-bike. But uh, let me finish putting this together and see what it finally looks like with both batteries installed. All right, so I'm finally done putting this bike together. Um, it took a little bit longer than I expected because it had a dual battery setup on this bike. You can get it in a single battery or a dual battery. And uh, so I had to put a rail on, a battery, and then you have two headlights that you have to install too, which these are pretty cool looking. I'm hoping these are bright at night because they look fantastic. But the bracket for these was a pain in the ass. But this is how the bike looks. I was going through the manual. They told me this bike only does 24 miles per hour but the manual says it goes up to 28 miles per hour. So I don't know if they don't have their information right or they're just lying to me and I'm gonna be more impressed when it goes higher top speed. Not exactly sure, but it is a very nice bike and I figure it's gonna do 28 miles an hour, especially with two batteries. I think it's a 750 watt motor or maybe it's a 500 watt motor. No, it's a 48 volt, 750 watt motor. So that should go pretty fast. So I think we're gonna hit 28 miles an hour. Looks pretty nice though. I don't know, you guys let me know what you guys think of the bike. It does use the display that the Zeus uses, which is pretty cool. I love that display. The only thing I notice on this bike is that, let me try to push this bike over so it doesn't move. If you move this throttle, it doesn't spring back. So I don't know if the throttle is messed up. See how it just stays there? I actually have to push it back to go. I don't know if uh, that's supposed to be normal or not. So I might have to contact them on that. If not, I could probably maybe switch it over to a thumb throttle or something. But anyways, that's pretty much it for the video. And again, if you guys wanna do anything with this bike, exactly what I did, the 72 volt system, um, it's super easy. I'll have links down in the description. It's gonna cost you another thousand dollars on top of the bike, but it's only a thousand dollars to go to 72 volt. And then you can have a custom big battery in here if you wanna have a company make you one. You can even have longer range, but I kind of like the setup. I'm not going to be going farther than probably 25 miles, so I should be okay. But I really appreciate you guys watching and sticking around to the end of the video. This was a fun one. This was a long one too for me anyways. Every time I have to put these bikes together, it's not the fastest process. Sometimes you're learning as you go and you don't want to mess anything up because I got to review these at the end of the day. So stay tuned to the next video. We're going to be uh, checking that bike out and messing around with it. Also, make sure you check my review video on this bike right here. This is a badass bike. If you guys want me to take this into more videos, let me know because I'm in love with this bike. It was super fun to ride. And one more thing, we have a skateboard from Meepo. It's the V5. And I'm probably gonna do that sometime in April because we got so much stuff going on and I'm just overwhelmed with product that now I have to start charging to do these videos because I have so many emails, they're all flooded. And I'm not ungrateful for it or anything like that, but it's just, it's a lot, especially with having a full-time 40 hour job. So thanks for watching again and again and again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.